If you have your Bibles, open up to Matthew chapter 6. On this day, our one-year celebration, we're just going to continue the series we've been in called Pray Like This. We want to be praying Christians, and we want to be a praying church. And I think it's apt that on this day, we're talking about prayer. Because from day one to our year one celebration, that's today, we wouldn't be here if it weren't for the grace of God. From from day one to our year one celebration, our prayers have been this declaration that we can't do anything without him. Now, depending on God for everything is actually not as easy as it seems. I look around and I listen to some of the fidgeting. All the kids here were super thankful for all the kids in this room. But it seems like the older you get, the harder it is to depend on others for help. Can I get an amen? Amen. I have three amazing kids, and it seems like every season, every year, they're just growing, they're getting bigger, they're getting more mature, they're getting bigger attitudes, and I love them to death. Long gone are the diaper days, and I'm so thankful the diaper days are gone. Long gone are the car seat days. I hated car seats. Yes, they saved my kid's life, but I hated the car seats. If I go back a little bit further, when we brought each of our kids home, there was that season of their life where when they needed something, they let us know. There was a shriek of a cry, and they didn't care what you were doing. They didn't care who you were talking to. They didn't care that it was 2.17 in the morning, the worst time to shriek and cry. But their shriek and their cry was letting us know that they needed something, they wanted something, and they were depending on us for help. Though those cries at 2.17 in the morning were sometimes hard, I think there's something about the audacious cry of a newborn that God wants us to learn from. I don't know who you are. I don't know where you're at in your journey. But today, what I want to talk about is the joy, the joy and the peace of depending on God for absolutely everything. You have your Bibles. We're just walking through the Lord's Prayer. Today, I'm going to pick it up. Matthew chapter 6, verse 5. This is God's living and abiding word. God's word says this. And when you pray, you must not be like the hypocrites, for they love to stand and pray in the synagogue and at the street corner, that they may be seen by others. Truly, truly, I say to you, they have received their reward. But when you pray, go into your room, shut the door, and pray to your Father who is in secret, and your Father who sees in secret will reward you. And when you pray, do not heap up empty phrases as the Gentiles do, for they think they will be heard for their many words." Do not be like them. Your father knows what you need before you ask him. Pray then like this. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we also have forgiven our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen? Amen. Today we're going to focus on praying for daily bread. And that prayer will humble us, but that prayer also honors God. It humbles us, and it honors God. Here's my main point for today. Daily daily prayer for daily bread keeps God's people desperately dependent upon him for all things. And that's where we want to be as a church, New City, desperately dependent upon him for all things. Daily prayer for daily bread keeps God's people desperately dependent upon him for all things. Desperately dependent upon him for everything. That's the safest place to be, New City. We can go through the scriptures and look at story after story. When God's people were humble, when God's people looked to him for prayer and guidance, God always led them in his grace. But when God's people operated out of their own strength and their own wisdom, they always fell short of what God had for them. I've got two headings for us under our main point, our God cares and our God is able. 
Our God cares, and our God is able. I hope these messages are going to be good news for us today. When we look at this prayer, we see that Jesus is teaching us how to pray, and he's teaching us not to just pray for the big things in life, but to pray for the smallest of things, teaching us to pray for the basic necessities of life, like bread, water, food, and shelter. Praying for the most basic necessities of life. Give us this day our daily bread. Now, I look around here, and one of the things I love about New City Church is we really are a diverse church. We're diverse ethnically and culturally. We're diverse educationally, politically. There's even wealth diversity in our congregation. So there are some people in this room that never have to worry about where their next meal is coming from. But there are some people in this room where crying out for daily bread is a real cry every month, every week, and every day. I'm one of those people that doesn't have to worry where his next meal is coming from at this point in my life. But I think my greatest temptation is to see myself no longer dependent on God for everything. Like, God, I got the bread thing figured out. That's on me. We're good there. You don't need to worry about providing me bread. If you can help me out in some other areas of my life, like I have a minivan from 1993, can you help me there, Lord? I think that the, the enemy would love to use whatever wealth we have as a means to fool us into living a life of self-sufficiency. I want us to be a church that takes praying for daily bread seriously. Because the reality is, if we're not dependent on God for the small things of life, we're never going to be dependent on God for the bigger things of life. Praying for daily bread is the way that Jesus is trying to train us to be dependent on him for absolutely everything. Now, three things happen when we pray for daily bread. Three things happen, especially for those who aren't worried about where their next meal is going to come from. Number one, it reminds us that everything we have comes from him. It reminds us that all we've earned and worked for is all of God's grace and all of God's favor. It also connects us in a deeper way to those that are in need. Remember the prayers, not just give me my daily bread, but give us our daily bread. As I'm praying for daily bread, it causes me to look up and look out and to see how I can use what I have to bless those that are truly in need. And I think when we pray for daily bread, number three, it's perspective perspective setting. It helps me delineate the difference between needs and wants, between needs and luxuries. As I'm praying for daily bread, it untangles my heart from needing the next iPhone, from needing the next pair of shoes. It helps me see that God has already met my most basic needs. So this is a prayer for everyone, New City, that we would be dependent on God for everything. Now, as we look at this prayer, from, from the very start, Jesus teaches us to pray to God as Father. Let me read verses 7 to 8 real quick. And when you pray, do not heap up empty phrases as the Gentiles do, for they think they will be heard because of their many words. But do not be like them, for your Father knows what you need before you ask him. Praying to God as Father changes everything. We're not praying to a God who is distant and aloof. We're praying to a God who cares, who delights when his children come knocking at the door at 2.17 in the morning. And I'm just amazed at the juxtaposition between God's bigness and God's involvement in the smallness of our lives. The God of the cosmos, this God cares about you. The God who created the heavens and the earth, he cares about you, this God. The God who sovereignly rules over all things, who's providentially working according to his perfect will. The God who has saved us through the blood of Jesus Christ. The God who is coming back to make all things new, new city. This God knows your name and knows every need that you have today. So here's my encouragement. If you're stressed out about where you're going to live in six months, run to the God who cares. If you don't know how you're going to pay rent 
and throw your little girl a birthday party, run to the God who cares. If your relationships seem to be falling apart, run to the God who cares. Whether we have a lot or we have a little, we want to be a people who are audaciously crying out to God for everything, knowing that when we cry out to him, he cares. Amen, New City? Hey, part of what we're trying to do today is look back and thank God for all that he's done. But I just want to take a little kind of parentheses in my sermon real quick and look forward. And as we look forward, these are prayers. These are the desperate, dependent prayers of New City. This is us dreaming and imagining where God will lead us in year two. Think about all he's done in one year. What can he do in two years, three years, five years, ten years? Here's some of our prayers for New City. Number one, we are praying that new people would make new decisions for Jesus. If 10 people made decisions for Jesus this year, we don't even need to put a number on it. We're just praying more and more people will turn their life to Christ. Right now, New City is looking to hire a full-time associate pastor, somebody who's going to fuel our efforts to make and unleash disciples of Jesus. We want to continue to invest in kids and youth ministries. We're going to launch something next year called the Gospel Cohort, an eight-week discipleship track. We want to equip new leaders to help us lead ministry teams. We want to equip new leaders to start new city groups. We need a city group in Jack London. We need a city group in West Oakland. We're praying to the Lord of the harvest that he's going to send new laborers to us. We're going to deepen our partnership with Love Never Fails. Can I get an amen? Amen. We're going to begin a partnership with Foster the City. We're going to start, by God's grace, a pastoral internship training and raising up future pastors within New City. We want to continue to prepare to become a church planning church. Not next year, but someday we want to start thinking about purchasing our own building. And more than anything, we want to continue to go deep in Jesus and wide in gospel impact. We don't want to do any of this in our own strength, in our own wisdom. Heavenly Father, we come before you desperate and dependent that you would lead us and make a way for year two, year three, year four, year five. Amen, New City? Will you pray for us and with us? I hope you will. Because it's not about New City Church. It's about what God is doing through and in this people. Our next point, our God is able. It's it's not just that he cares. Our God is able. He's not so distant that he's somehow removed from the details of our lives. And he's not weak and impotent, somehow bound from actually meeting our needs. There's plenty of times where my kids come for help, and I'm just unable to help them. Like when my kids come home and ask for help with math, I'm completely helpless. And my kids let me know, you're helpless, father. Like, I struggle with math back when I was in middle school, but now they've changed the rules, they've changed the games. It's not even math anymore. I'm actually helpless to my kids. I want you to hear this, New City. There is never a time when God is unable. I don't know what you're going through. I'm not promising you that he's going to answer your prayer the way you want him to, but there is never a time when God is unable. Let's talk about bread real quick. Or more specifically, let's talk about this physical world. God has created us as embodied souls, meaning that we're made up of both soul and body. And part of being physical creatures is that we have physical needs. If we don't eat and drink, we don't live. But oftentimes, I think when it comes to praying for daily bread, it almost seems unspiritual. Like, shouldn't I be praying for my sanctification? Shouldn't I be praying for their salvation? Shouldn't I be praying for justice and mercy in our city? And we would say yes and amen. And that the Lord's Prayer gives us a framework for praying for all of those things. But it's just as spiritual to pray for daily bread. God doesn't somehow overlook the physical necessities we need to survive in this world. And I would say that our relationship with God is going to be stunted until we depend upon him for the smallest of things. And all throughout the scriptures, God has shown himself to be a providing God. 
in Exodus chapter 16, when God's people have just been rescued from the tyranny of the Egyptians, they're in the wilderness and they're grumbling because they have nothing to eat. Our providing God meets them by sending down manna from the sky. When the disciples of Jesus were gathered around him, hundreds and thousands of people, when they had nothing to eat and nowhere to go, Jesus revealed his glory by multiplying the loaves and the fishes, literally feeding thousands. The God of the cosmos does not overlook your everyday needs. He cares and he is able. He is father and he is provider. And I think there's this deep connection between our physical needs and our spiritual needs. And John chapter 6 actually highlights this for us really well. In John chapter 6, there's a group of people that are following Jesus. And they're following Jesus not because they believe in him to be the son of God or their savior and Messiah. They're following Jesus because Jesus is a miracle worker. It's pretty cool to see people multiply loaves and fishes. But the purpose of the miracles was always to point back to the identity of Christ. It's not just about bread and, and fish. It's about the one who performed this miracle. It's testifying to him as the eternal son of God and the savior of the world. But they weren't seeing that clearly. And Jesus says to them, truly, truly, I say to you, you are seeking me not because you saw signs, but because you ate your fill of the loaves. Do not work for the food that perishes, but for the food that endures to eternal life, which the Son of Man will give to you. Later on, Jesus said more directly, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never hunger. Whoever believes in me will never thirst. Jesus and Jesus alone is the one who satisfies the deep longings of our soul. And if we take John 6 seriously, there's a way we could have all the bread in the world. Houses and homes and vacations. We can have everything that this physical world offers and still have these deep hunger pains that something is missing. If you're here today and maybe you're seeking and searching, if you're here today and you have hunger pains, not just for dinner later on, but for something else in this world, I believe that you've been created as a physical and spiritual creature not just for the physical things of this world, but you've been created to know your creator, to know him, enjoy him, and find life in him. But New City, we don't come into this world crying out for God. None of us have. We come into this world crying for independence, freedom, and autonomy. We don't want God. We want to be the God of our own lives. We come into this world crying for freedom, independence and autonomy, not depending on God, but depending on ourselves. And because of this, there's this great chasm between us and God because we haven't honored God as God. The Bible calls this very clearly sin. And because of this chasm and because of our sin, we find ourselves in a needy position, in this place of desperation. We need mercy. We need grace. We need forgiveness. Remember, God sees us in our need, and he cares. And he's not just a God who cares. He's a God who is able. So the God who cares and the God who is able sees us in our desperate position, and he sends his son Jesus for us. Not to just show us what the good life looks like. Not to just live a moral and ethical life. Jesus does that, but Jesus from day one is headed to the cross. And even on the cross, Jesus is not in some abstract way kind of showing us, I love you this much, I'll die for you. That's not what Jesus is doing. Jesus is doing something very specific on the cross. He's taking all of your sin and all of my sin upon himself. So that that chasm that existed between us and God, if we look to Jesus in faith, that chasm is obliterated. Rather than being alienated from God, we find ourselves reconciled reconciled, brought by the hands of Jesus into the fatherly love of our creator. Jesus is the good news of the gospel. And our God is an able God. Our God provides for us today our daily bread, and our God for us today provides us the bread of life. And again, we want to be a people 
who audaciously cry out to him for everything, daily bread and the bread of life, and everything in between. He cares and he is able. New City Church, uh, my parents are here today. Uh, my dad is here. Uh, I love my father. Um, both my, my, my parents are here and my in-laws are here. They've been supporting. Uh, I have to give my in-laws a shout out or I'm in trouble. <laughs> They've been supporting us from day one. I'm so thankful. But if I think about my father, my father has showed his love for me for 40 years. Now, as a 40-year-old man, I wish I knew more about this world and I knew more about life. But every once in a while, I still have to call up my dad and ask for help. And when I call up my dad and ask for help, I, I call with a lightness and with a joy in my heart. Because I know, one, my dad's always going to pick up my call. My dad's not going to embarrass me or shame me for not knowing how to fix something in the house. My dad cares, and if he's able, he's there to help me. New City, I want you to hear this today. I want you to run with great audacity to your father who cares and is able. And if you come knocking at his door, he will not turn his back on you. He will not shame you. He will not embarrass you. He will welcome you. He will love you. He will meet you in your time of need and show you his grace and mercy. Our God cares, and he is able, New City. He is Father, and he is Provider. Before we continue in worship with one last song, New City, bow your heads in prayer. Heavenly Father, we walk into this room, and I know we are beyond grateful and thankful for all the good things that you're doing in this church and hopefully in our lives individually. But I, I know that as we walk in here, it's not like all of our needs have just been met in this moment. We're, we still come in here as needy creatures. We're still dependent upon you for all things. And I just pray that more and more of us would find joy in the humble pursuit of desperately depending on you for everything. And so I don't know where everybody's at here, but if there's people here that just want to acknowledge that they need help just with the physical things of life, maybe it's food, maybe it's relationships, maybe it's rent, but you're, you're here today and you're saying, Lord, I need your help. And I want to kind of stop acting like I have it all together. I want to come as your child, desperately dependent on you for all things. If you're here and you need help with just the daily bread, the necessities of life, will you just raise your hand? We just want to spend a moment and just pray for you and acknowledge you. If you're here today and you want to just declare your desperate dependence upon you, would you raise your hand? I see the hands in this room. We want you to know that we as a church family, we love you and we care for you. We're here to walk with you through the challenging and the hardships of life. And maybe there's people here that have maybe been running away from God. Maybe they have daily bread, but they don't have the bread of life. They're still living with those hunger pains that nothing in this world can satisfy. And maybe you're here today, and with clarity, you see like, oh my goodness, I have sinned. I have been running away from God. I haven't honored God. And maybe today, you not only want to acknowledge your sin, but you also want to acknowledge Jesus as your Savior, placing your faith in him, your commitment to follow him, believing that he, he alone is your only hope in this world and in the world to come. If that's you today, would you raise your hand? See those hands. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the people that are making up this church family. And we're not going to lie about it. We are a needy church. We've got needs all day long, and we're not going to be embarrassed to share those needs with one another, but more importantly, sharing those needs with you. We want to be like newborn babies 
who have the audacity to cry out at all times of the day, and we cry out to you, knowing that you're a God who cares for us, that you love us more deeply than we can even imagine, and that you're a God who is able, you're infinitely mighty, infinitely powerful. And so, Heavenly Father, we want to continue to declare our dependence upon you and give you all glory and praise. It's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen.